Hey Ross World, today we are at the LeMay Family Collection Foundation Museum. And basically, this is a museum that's filled with old collection of cars. Let me give you a small history of Harold LeMay. Harold LeMay, he was born on September 4th, 1919 and died November 4th, 2000. He was the owner of Harold LeMay Enterprise, which is a refuse company or a trash company in Tacoma, Washington, uh, metropolitan area. He was the owner of the largest private automobile collection in the world at the time of his death. So we're about to embark on some old collection of cars. I believe he even has a Back to the Future car, DeLorean, or something of that um, matter. So hopefully we get to see some cool cars. So let's get in here. These are really old cars. Alfa Romero Spider, 1978. The year of my birth. <laughs> 1953 Ford Agalar. Very beautiful, very pristine cars. And once again, this is the LeMay Le Museum one of the world largest private car collections. And I'm in here by myself, what a treat. 1953 Singer Roaster. And supposedly I have two more buildings of cars. So unfortunately, I'm gonna try to just give you some rare antiquities. Look at this. What is this thing? Let's get a better shot at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at this 2002 Earl V8 bike. That's crazy. And as we cross over, we have a 1959 Morris Minor, <laughs> a Woody, Woody wagon. <laughs> you got cars all up here. Simply beautiful. Look at this mail, sir. U.S. Mail, 1957 Cushman. Three wheel mail cab. Very, very beautiful cars. Very unique cars. 1939 HD prototype. Let me zoom in for you. V8. Look at that 1959 BMW. Right here. That little thing. <laughs> Who would have thought? And let's call that the banana up there. Oh, here's a treat. 1936 Mercedes Benz. And we can just, what was this, Thailand, Taiwan? And that old banana we was looking at is a 1986 HM Tremuter. Whoever knows what that is. What a beauty here. That is a 1935 Sierra 12 125S, super convertible. Look at this little Billy. This is an actual car. That is small. Let's get up in there, switches. No hydraulics though. This is a Fiat, look at that. They've been making Fiat's for a while. This is 1960. We're moving to the other room. Chill for a second. What in the world is this? This is a 2006 custom dragster Draco. 
Wow. Awesome. Someone's hand. Hope nothing don't jump out at me. I think this is their uh, Halloween special. Chromed out motor. King of Custom. George Barris. Look at this. If you don't know what this car is, these cars made headlines back in the 50s. This is a 1953 Studebaker Champion Deluxe. This is a very, very beautiful luxury car of the 50s. Look at this. Now, no leg room for an average type American of today. Very basic dash panel, but simply beautiful and in great shape. You got the Chevy Fleet Master back there. Those are, that's real wood on those doors. I wonder if they warped at any time. Look how many people is seated. Look at that. Nice. Nice. I'm gonna spin around here. Looking at old school Harley Davidson. And what is this beauty over here? Look at this blue beauty. Ah, oh, that's a beautiful color. Good paint job. This is, oh, this is a 1948 Tucker 48. Now, I know a little bit about this. Now, if this, a Preston Tucker who made only 50 cars and this is the 48th one. Now, supposedly that middle headlight is supposed to turn when you turn the wheel. Preston Tucker also is the one who innovated um, fuel injection. And if you notice, there's a seat belt right here. And don't forget, this is 1948. He's the one who put in seat belts. He's the one who put in the, the light when you turn the wheel. He's the one who put in uh, fuel injection. He definitely changed the car industry. And guess who killed him? Ford, you said it. Yes, this is one of, look at the pipes. This is 1948. Look at the cylindrical backdrop of the car. This is one of a kind car. He only made 50. And here is one right here. Very, very beautiful car. Old school, definitely old school. I like it. All right, we're moving to another room. <laughs> it has its own little room. Look at this. This is a 1950 Starlight Coupe Pro Stock V8. Man, that was a Studebaker over here. A 1949, no, this is a 1949 Oldsmobile Futuramic 88. Alright, to another room. Now here's a large room with a lot of antiques in them. Old school radios. Now don't forget he was born in 1919 and he died in 2000. So he has, has collected many of things. Now look at this beauty. I keep calling them beauty because these are very beautiful cars. Very uh, uh, old and prestige and the detailing in these cars, even during those years, you can really appreciate this. Now, granted, I'm not an old school car lover. I'm a new school, I love the technology and things of that matter. This is a 1954 Kaiser Darren Roadster. Now, this is not what I call a beauty. <laughs> I'll just call this functional. And this is a 1958 Studebaker Commander now, here's a little treat. We can just call this the Red Devil. Look at the, look how the wheels are covered. <laughs> Inside, the small windows. Very limited room in the back. No, nope, that really has good leg room considering the other vehicles. Got the A-Track in there. Wow. 
really good detailing on this car. And this is a 1951 Mercury four-door sedan. Simple, but beautiful. Look at this. Let me get you, give me a good shot of that. Look at that thing. That's ugly. That's pretty. That's ugly. <laughs> Let's look in here. Look at these, I guess these are true bucket seats. <laughs> they got a sunroof. Look at that. Yeah, I'll get down low. This is a very low car. Uh, pipes on the side. Chrome wheels. Engine popped out. And the winner is a 1955 Chevrolet Nomad Wagon Play Bunny Coach. Definitely a Play Bunny. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. This looks English, doesn't it? This looks something out of uh, Mary Poppins or Driving Miss Daisy. Let's get a little closer into it. Very simple. Here's your front seat. Look at the separation here with a window. Very thoughtful. In the back seat. That's pretty good leg room. extra one on the side pipes this is a 1983 Duesenberg 2nd SJ huh no built with a 1983 Ford truck chastity and a Lincoln engine nope seems like this is an American car with a Duesenberg name <laughs> it's up to 200 look at that $225,000. Wow. Old oh, school for you. We're rotating around. We're just going to pass up some of these ones that doesn't seem as interesting as the ones we've seen. Now look at this thing right here. This is a high heel shoe that someone made in 1990. Oh. A red Stiletto custom built art car, twin engine, <laughs> fiberglass <Fly for> shell. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at that. This is definitely a high heel Stiletto with the engine. Come all the way down. Yep, it has everything you need to drive it. And it has a seat. If you can see that seat, let me back up a little bit. If you can see that seat, well, that's a seat right here. All right, we're moving to another room. Here's a small treat for you. What is this? And I'm about to show you. I'm about to zoom. I want you to take a good look at this. Do you see that uh, presidential emblem or insignia or seal? Let's, let's zoom in on this. President of the United States of American Seal. Yes. Now let's look at the year. They're going to try to figure out who was president at the time of this vehicle. Nineteen eighty-six, Cadillac form. Presidential movie limousine features light armored glass using the film The American President in the Line of Fire. So, quite frankly, this wasn't the real deal, but a movie replica. Probably used when, who was president at that time? Was it Nixon? Was it Carter? Was it Kennedy? Huh, we'll figure that out later. So I named everybody except one person, Ronald Reagan. I had to really think about it, 1986. I'm trying to figure out if that's before or after he got shot. So this vehicle was made for a movie during the time of Ronald Reagan, Reaganomics. Baby, baby. You don't see that every day. That's a uh, speedboat with wheels on it 
that's hanging on a wall. He said, from down here. He says, yeah, I bought a car from down here. Look at this. Can anyone guess what that is? Let me tell you. That's a 1971 Jaguar XKE. And look at this little uh, moped or scooter. Let's see what it is. Oh, a 1985 De Blasi R7 scooter. Can we guess what this is? You can tell by that insignia, that emblem right there in the middle. That is a Jaguar. Let's see what type. A 1959 Jaguar Mark, Mark 1. Got some old cars up here. They don't seem that interesting. That's why they're not down on the bottom floor, the showroom floor. Can't even really see the size of them. Now, look at these stage cars. <laughs> look at the roof. Just enough to protect you from for some rain. All right. So I have procrastinated enough. Now it's something that I mentioned earlier when I first started about the DeLorean. Guess what? They do have one. Look at this thing right here. A 1983 DeLorean DMC-12 engine built by collaboration between Fogart, Renault, and Volvo. This car, actual, the actual price new is $25,000. So let's take a look at it. Stainless steel, brushed metal, brushed steel all the way around. You got the, let's come back around here, you got the Lorian right here. This is beautiful. Of course, please do not touch everywhere I go. But this is an actual Back to the Future car. Now, now I made up, this is the actual car. Now you can tell in there, they have heat and air conditioning. Sorry for the blurriness. Let me get out of focus. There we go. There we go. You can tell. Yeah, this is an actual DeLorean. You don't see these every day. Of course not, right? No one's driving them anymore. This is a 1980 Ferrari. There's a chain right here. I can give you a side view like I would. Here's the front view. So we're gonna, we have some more cars to see. So I'm gonna try to just give you a quick rundown. This is a 1972 Stute Black Hawk. This is a 1986 Zimmer Quicksilver. Look at this old thing. This is a 1929 Pierce Arrow. If you know your cars, you know what I'm talking about. This is a 1925 Stute Roaster. This next one is a 1935 Chevrolet EC. This next one is a 1924 Studebaker. This is a 1972 Centron SM. And that's a 1956 Centron 2CV. Let's go to another building. Here we are in the truck building. Now, we got some bolt motors over here. I won't spend too much time but they're everywhere. 1960s, 1940s, all sorts of boat motors. But let's get into these trucks. It's a Green Lantern over here. Nope, this is a 1953 Fargo half ton. And right beside me is a 1965 Ford Ecoline. Look at that tonneau cover. That's a beautiful red. Look at the blue kidnapping van. Yes, I said it. Kidnapping. Has the windows on this. Has the windows right here and the uh, passenger and the driver. This is a 1955 Ford panel truck. As you can tell, panel, right? No windows. But I believe that truck do or does have back windows. This is a beautiful truck here with some wood paneling. This is a 1955 Dodge half ton. Now back to the kidnapping van. Let's see. Okay, yes, it has the back windows, but as you can tell, they're darkened out. 
That's so when you kidnap somebody, they can't see you out. Now you can see that light in the background. They're not darkened out, okay. I was wrong. But they will be darkened out if you know what I'm saying. Look at this brown bastard right here. This is a 1938 Dodge half ton. This pickup truck, it's a 1946 Mercury one ton. And some old school bumper cars. Hmm. Got Dodger on them. Let's give you guys an overlook of what I'm looking at. On this other side, I can't really get to the side view of these, but we'll go down the line and read off what they are. See if you guys know some of these cars. Maybe you fathers and mothers have some of them laying in the backyard somewhere. Now this one right here is a 1958 Chevrolet Apache Camel. Now I don't know some of these names, so if I'm butchering them, I apologize. Right here is a 1978 Dodge Adventure 100 pickup. This is a 1952 Chevrolet Half Ton. A 1941 Chevrolet Half Ton. A 1938 Chevrolet Half Ton. This is a 1968 International Scout 4x4 pickup, one of a kind. And this is a 1946 Dodge Half Ton pickup, sorry. Uh, 44,000 miles on it. Oh, this one right here? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's 1966 on the inside. Hasn't been touched. Wow. Is this one of the first, like, travel coaches? It, well, yeah. Back in the 60s, you know, those were pretty rare. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it was. What is this thing right here? It looks like a tractor of some sort. It's a snowcat. It's a snow and that cat. is a Tucker snowcat. See, uh, after Tucker... After his car went out in 1949, mm -hmm. he built snow caps. I didn't know that because I, I know about the, the... This is the what building? The white building? Houses. It's kind of a catch-all. Okay. Well, we have meetings and, and things going on in the, in the main bu building up there. Okay. And so we have to bring cars down here. Ah. Now this car here is a hub. And this one is just purchased by Doug LeMay. And it's only been in the collection about two months. Now, Doug is one of the younger sons. Okay. And he's he still buys cars. Wow. So he buys about 20 cars a year, depending on the year. That's crazy. Now this Model T over here. Model T. This is a, a brand new Model T truck. Just finished restoration and was donated to us. Nice. So that one has only been in the collection for a short period also. Now we'll start over here. Now when you first come in here, you see the storage racks. Yeah, I always look at those. That Those cars are interesting, but not as interesting as the cars down here. Well, there's 125 <laughs> cars up in the storage racks. Up here? Yeah, just rack levels two and three. 125 cars. So that you can see what's in them. Rack level two is blue, rack level three on top is green. So uh, that you can tell what's up there. But those are in permanent storage, more or less. Got it. Now we've got the limos up here. Be that, you mean how many of them drive? Yeah, how many of the cars, like, out of all the cars that's on the Marymount, you know, foundation here, how many you believe that actually work, that runs? Well, they all work with Harold Bob. Okay. But when we, when we bring them into an area like this, the fire marshal makes us remove all the fluids. Ah, because you're storing them. Yeah. Okay. So in here, there's probably maybe 15 or 20 vehicles that still drive. Put a battery in it, you know, get the battery. And get it going. Okay. But we have about 15 cars that we take out to shows and things. This looks sick right here. A 1973 Elite Laser 917. 
It looks like a McLaren almost. What's that? This one looks like a McLaren almost. This one is actually a kit car. It's a copy of a Porsche 917, but it's a kit car and it actually has a Corvair engine in the back. Oh, okay. Hmm. This one over here is a, that's a 32 Chevy and that's, early Chevys are rare because Chevrolets have wood in their bodies. They have, uh, now hydrogen is dangerous. Yes, yeah, so but you said this has been remade to run off of hydrogen. This car, has no driver, no driver's seat, and no steering wheel. It runs remotely. Remotely? So it's a huge remote control car. Yeah, it has all, all underneath, it has servos to drive the steering and so on. <laughs> and it runs off of hydrogen. Yeah. Yep. That's crazy. This one over here is the lowest lane car. The I lowest just, lane car. Too young to remember Superman uh -huh. uh, in the 50s. There was a- Who was, who was the actor then? Um, Reeves. This is a Soviet that, gauze? That's a copy of an American Jeep. And then there's an American Jeep next to it there. So this, so this is Russian right here, this one? Yeah, these are made in the Iron Curtain countries. Okay. If you remember uh, Indiana Jones, the Crystal Skull? I do. When they're driving through the jungle, mm -hmm. that's what they're driving. That's what they're driving, okay. I remember that. Damn Russians. You say it's a plastic sports car? It uses a Ford V8 engine and they built it out of ABS plastic. This car right here? Hmm? Made out of plastic? Yeah. It was one of the very first, you know, in 75 was the first year they came out with uh, mandated five miles an hour bumpers. Huh. And this is one of those that had the safety bumper on it. It would take a five mile an hour crash. Wow. This one over here is a real general. Now, you've maybe seen clones of the General Lee, but this is a real one. This is the original one. Yes. This came from the series. And if you remember the series, it was on for about eight or nine years. I watched it as a kid. They did about 250 episodes. And they 250 used, episodes? episodes? Yeah, over the eight or nine years. Wow. And they used 250 cars. And 250 they, cars? So they was actually crashing these cars? Yeah. Okay. And when they got done, there were 17 cars left. And this is one of the 17 cars that was left. All of the others had that is, doors. That is correct. Left. All the other doors, they didn't have door handles on the other one. Uh, they had handles. But, they have handles? But you had to get in because they had the doors welded shut. Because that was part of the... But this one can open? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was part of the thing was that it was supposed to be an ex-NASCAR racing car. Ah. And all the NASCAR cars have the doors welded shut. Okay. See, we're not politically correct <laughs> here, you know? So this car right here... We got right here, Lee, we got right next to it. A 1983 car. Porsche 928 was, was supposed to replace the 911, and this particular car was owned by Bill Cosby. Right, and it only has 24,000 miles in it. That's crazy. Hmm. Bill Cosby actually donated it to, uh, to the Simeon Museum back okay. on the East Coast. What happened, what happened, how did it get here? We purchased it from them. Oh. Yeah. Every once in a while, museums, you know, will sell some of their stock. Do these lights, do these lights, do they, they pop up? Yeah. Okay. So, but this is this one is made by the Gauze uh, company. Is that the name of the company, Gauze? Uh, the name of the company is Gauze. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a Soviet company. Okay. But the model is a Chaika, and the Chaika is only meant for the top level bureaucrats in the Politburo. And like you were saying about the Packard, this says it's a clone of a Packard Patrician. This is a copy, it happens to be a copy of the Packard. See that Packard and this one are almost identical. Oh, they flared out the light uh, lids yeah. a little bit, okay. They copied the Packard. But only a few of these were built. They look expensive, and I mean. they would be a chauffeured by a Soviet army colonel. Now, all, uh, these were supposed to be crushed before they got out of the Soviet Union. But 
two have made it to this country. Really? Yeah, just two. And were they, the people who brought them over here, were they Russian? Yeah. Well, really? this one was owned by the... And when Russia, when the Russian Federation broke up, he took his car and went to Romania. <laughs> because nobody was going to, you know, he was head of the KGB. Nobody was going to tell him he couldn't take the car. Yes. So he took it to Romania, and he became part of the Romanian government for a while. Wow. And sold his car during that time. And the guy who bought it happened to live in Oregon. And he brought it out through England. He drove it from Romania uh, to England. Shaika. Hmm. And then shipped it. You see that tag on the front windshield there? That is an English tax stamp. Oh, okay. So he took it out through Great Britain and then shipped it here to the United States. It came out with a V-16. A V-16 Cadillac? Yeah. We have two of those. You'll see them in the next building. And this is a V-12. Yeah. So Cadillac has always been a luxury brand car. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You wow. Know who started Cadillac? Who? Henry Ford. Henry Ford saw the Cadillac? What happened was that Henry Ford started three companies. The first company, because Henry Ford was hard to get along with, the first company and his... Now this is a beautiful car right here. Now nice luxury cars car. These are British cars. This is an Austin. And this is an Austin Princess. Austin was a, a medium price car in okay. Great Britain. But this is their attempt to make a very extensive car. Next to this Bentley so over here. A few of these princesses. A 1956 this Bentley. This one here is a Bentley. And Bentley was part of Rolls Royce. Yes. All of the English cars are gone now. Bentley is still around, but it's owned by Volkswagen. I didn't know that. Rolls Royce is still around, but it's owned by BMW. So all of the British cars are gone. Austin is gone. It is, I guess it's an old school fire truck that carried the ladders for the firemen. This is a 1923 American of France hooking ladder truck. <laughs> it is 100% original. Everything you see on here is original. And this truck has a four, an 855 cubic inch six cylinder engine and you can see it up here it still runs 1923 oh this still runs yep you see the fan belt it's riveted leather wow look at that big old school light yep the cadillac logo all lined up but when you say that in 1958, when this was built, that if it rained, all the windows went up. You see the price on this? In 1958. Yeah, 13,000. Uh, Rolls Royce was cheaper than that. But air all of, all air of suspension. The metal on this car is only for this car. Air suspension in 1958. I'm still astonished that if it rained, all the windows went up. Now, did the wipers go too? Did the wipers go too? Yeah. In 1958. 1958. I'm, you know I'm shocked right now. <laughs> I'm just shocked. They did a lot of things in cars back through the years. But in 58, I'm, rain sensor? I mean, you can't even get that, you know, in a $12,000 car now. Like, that's, right. <laughs> that's crazy yeah. that they had that technology. Yeah, but... I still think the coolest thing is the shot glasses. Where is that at? You pull down, you pull down the the glove compartment, uh -huh. and there are magnetic shot glasses lined up with the Cadillac logo on them. So basically, drinking and driving. So you could drink <laughs> while you were driving. It was a different time. It was a different time. It wasn't illegal then, huh? Huh? It wasn't illegal then, drinking and driving. Well, I, I, it was still illegal, but you know. These, they were kind of uh, uh, trying to sell to people like uh, Sinatra and, uh, you know, the Rat Pack. Rich people, basically. Cars. Got it. And those are the kinds of people that would like that. You know? That's crazy. The first Impala was built in 1958. 
Bel Air, where did they get the name Bel Air from? Bel Air was the top of the line in 57. Cadillac, or uh, Chevrolet had used that uh, for, for uh, quite a few years. But now Impala was top of the line. So this is the first Impala. Nice. In 1900, this is how people got around. With a, with a horse. That's with a horse. That's yeah. one horsepower. <laughs> one horsepower. <laughs> now, in actuality, up until 1915, there were more carriages built than cars. It, was, it wasn't until 1915 that cars, more cars were made than, than carriages. This is the very first patented car. 1886. Yep, that's right. German made. That's right. So Ford did not make the first car. Uh, my Ford in 1886 was uh, wasn't even born. Uh, he may have been born. And this car has a motor. Yeah. Now this, uh, you see, it's a single cylinder, and it's belt drive, and has a flywheel here. Now Carl. Benz, 1886. Because Carl Benz was in Germany, he didn't get a lot of attention for this car. But his wife was a woman by the name of Bertha Benz. Mm -hmm. And she was rich in her own right. She had a lot of money. She took this car without Carl's knowledge. And she went on a trip to visit her mother. And her mother lived in Heidelberg, 60 miles away. Now, no one in 1886 had, had taken a motorized vehicle on any kind of trip at all, except for the train. So when she did that, she got, and she came back from that trip, 120 miles round trip, she got worldwide attention. It hit all of the newspapers that a woman had taken this car on 120 The very first miles. car, wow. So she actually, made Carl's company what it is today. She made Mercedes-Benz. Without her, there probably would be no Mercedes-Benz. Well before Henry Ford? In 1903, Henry Ford had not formed Ford Motor Company yet. So, Oldsmobile was the first um, production car? That's right. What happened? I mean, no, nobody really wants to buy Oldsmobile anymore. Well, uh, you know, they were still making these by hand. When I say production car, he made about, about, uh, I think the number was uh, 6,000 of these built. All by hand. 6,800 of these were built. Wow. So it was the first car in, in numbers like that. What type of fuel did it take? By now, gasoline was Gasoline, available. okay. Yeah. So it was a gas motor. Now you're looking at 1906, three years later. Now Henry has, this is Henry's third company. And Henry, most of his first cars were touring cars, like that one back there. And those were- So really big cars. cars. Yeah. And those were being sold to the rich. But Henry knew that he had to get the price down. So this car here, this one is the N. And this car was Henry's first small car. This is before the Model T. This is the N. Now Henry built cars from the start of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But the Model T was the most popular. That's right. The Model N sold in pretty good numbers. It saved his company. But then the T would follow that. and. He sold about 5,000 of these Model N's. Model T's sold 17 million. Wow. So there was a big difference. Now this is a touring car. And this is what rich people would be buying. You know, in the- They had bucket seats. <laughs> yeah, it was a very classic car. Uh, yeah, it looks you nice. You can see the, the, uh, the quality on this car is very high. And it's a very, very expensive car. Wow. You know, again, probably more than half a million dollars in today's money because this car was so early. But this, the model this one is 1911. And when you say electric start, 
Is that like what we say today, push button start? Yeah. In 1911? Yes. Push button start. 1919. Cadillac had it in 1912. Push button start. Yeah. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. Okay. I'm just, I mean, I'm just astonished because we're talking about we had push button start in 1912. Yeah. Well, you would still see the cranks on the cars. The cranks would still be there because this car was made in 1911 and in 1911 it didn't have an electric start. Mm -hmm. But they added from a later car. And that's why I'm telling you Model T's are different than any other car because when you look at Model T's today, mm -hmm. they've been changed over a hundred years. These cars are a hundred years old. So the parts in there, they're kind of a mishmash of parts over the years. So people changed them because they could get newer parts. You know, if you bought a 1911, you'd put, you'd put a later starter on it. You'd put a uh, two-speed rear end and you'd put different fenders on it. You'd but it kind of makes me upset that in 1912 they had push button start and they don't even have push button start in all the cars of today. That's just it's crazy. Well, they have push button start, but it's on a, on a key. Well, you no, know I'm saying like if you go out and buy a brand new, I don't know, uh, let's say Honda Civic, yeah. you have to get a certain package to get push button start on it. They should. I mean, you you would think it would be standard by now. Well, yeah, but but the key isn't much different. True. Know? This one because it says here it's an electric. Now you're always talking about uh, old cars and how they. They can do things. You see, this was an electric car. And this electric car had a range of 80 miles. There are electric cars today that don't have a range of 80 miles. It's a big glass bubble. Looks comfortable, but. See, you don't drive from the front seat on this car. You drive from the back seat. <laughs> ah, I see. Now this car was all electric. And like I said, 80 mile range. This is the charger for it over here. Oh, the electric charger. Uh huh. That's what. So you would get that when you bought you'd it. Have that in your in your garage, and then you'd plug it into the car. So there were plenty of electric cars around, and electric cars were popular. So this is the particular year that people actually look for. What's that? This is the year that people, when they look for a charger, they really want. Yeah. That's the elephant motor, 426, 426 horsepower. Wow. This one here is the old Tornado. This is uh, General Motors' first front-wheel drive car. And then you got the Cougar, which is kind of an upscale <laughs> Mustang. Made by Mercury. Here. Great road car. This is back when we didn't care about gas mileage, as we hadn't had a gas crisis quite yet. People always talk about the Gremlin, so is this original art or is this a restored art? Uh, this is original. Uh, somebody painted that Gremlin on it, though. Oh, okay. AMC went uh, American Motor Company? Yes. Yeah. Nash and Hudson had gotten together in 1952 and formed American Motors. The Gremlin reminds me of the, was it Chevy that made the Rabbit? Someone made a car called the Rabbit, American car oh, made yeah. a Rabbit. Uh, yeah, Volkswagen. Volkswagen. Yeah. Volkswagen right. I thought it was an American car company who made this it. This one here is a Cosworth Vega, and it only has 8,900 original miles. Was this popular? It doesn't... It has a Cosworth engine in it. They offered a, it's kind of a hot rod Vega from the factory. They offered, they only uh, had a few of those, so they were almost twice the cost. 
These Pacers are really unique cars, though. Yeah, I've always liked the Pacers, but uh, a lot of people don't like them. They call them uh, goldfish. I mean, look at the look how the uh, sides flare out like a bubble. Yeah, yeah. It's the only car where the doors don't match. Well, it's made by AMC as well. The door on the passenger side is four inches wider than the door on the on the driver's side. Do you know the reason for that? Uh, yeah, so you can get in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Passengers can get in. It's a hybrid from a local company here in Seattle. Yeah, it says a concept vehicle, but it yes. it looks pretty futuristic in a sense. It's uh, it, Instead of using batteries, it has a high-speed flywheel. And so it uses a flywheel to store energy. The tires look funky too. The company, uh, the, they proved the concept would work, but the flywheel, I guess, was uh, dangerous. And so it never got into production. Now these two here, this is the the car from Transformers. Oh, uh, Bumblebee? Transformers movie. Bumblebee? That's the Solstice from Transformers movie, and then this is the cutaway of the Solstice. You see the machine guns in the front? Oh. <laughs> and then you can see the weaponry in the back. Oh, wow, okay. So this is the actual one of the cars they actually used. Yeah, this is the actual car they used in the movie. <laughs> There's some kind of button down here that you push and it goes up on rails. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll go on a, on a railroad track. So Ross World, that was the LeMay family collection of old and new cars. I didn't really take some of the new cars. It was basically like 2013s, 2007s, but this was a really a treat for me. And I hope, hopefully it was a treat for you. I've learned a lot of information. I couldn't take the whole tour. It was about two hours. We talked about almost every car. We went through the, uh, the cars were first originally made in 1886 until today. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned something. And this is Raw's World. <laughs> and in the future, we will be doing a lot of recording of different things. I plan on exploring quite a few things and we're going to travel a bit. See you soon. Ross World, out.